You are now listening to the sounds of um, What year did you officially move from Maine to out to the, the Bay Area? And was that directly due to creating Anticon and wanting to push it further um, in a place that hip hop was booming? Is that basically the reasoning from relocating? Um, I mean, I, 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 uh, I don't think Anticon was really a formed idea. Okay. Um, I think like me and pedestrian wanted to move to the Bay and wanted to do hip hop. You know what I mean? Maybe we had the idea of doing a label, mm -hmm. but, um, I'd have to ask him, but, um, but like during the course of like moving across the country, we recorded deep puddle and then we just started coming in contact with all of these people. Um, and it just like when we all met, it was like, oh, we should be together making music together. Mm -hmm. And then because we were already moving to the Bay and that seemed like a place that seemed like a good place to do this kind of thing. Um, that's kind of where the idea came together. I like, you know what I mean? Like just in that gray area between like moving and yeah, your meeting and who was your who was your call? Did you just you consciously just said I'm going to the bay? You didn't have no contact. This is just off the whim, and I'm taking off down there. That's fucking nuts, man. Uh, hats off to you for doing that. Different time. I know that's crazy. Crazy. I crazy. mean, we yeah, uh, and I don't think kids. I don't think people can can really do that anymore. You mm. know, shit's so expensive yeah, now, oh yeah. Oh and yeah. there's so little money to be made for music. I, I mean, it's kind of kind of sucks. Like you're missing out on a whole authentic experience of of uh, you know is missing out on that. Uh, so, how old were you when you came out to to the Bay Area? Twenty. Twenty. Damn, you're still a kid then. What year was that? Nineteen ninety eight. Jesus. Um, but you know, I'll say I, I didn't like go blindly out there. Um, DJ staff. Uh, had this magazine called Vinyl Exchange and she was involved in show promotions and she had had like had me out for a show and it was a really cool experience I met like Peanut Butter Wolf and like you know what I mean it was just like all the good community kinda, like like oh shit this is the opposite of what it felt like going to New York and going to Fat Beats and trying to like meet people yeah. you know what I mean like these people were friendly and shit um, and uh, yeah and I was like and then P minus who had been selling my tapes through ATAC, um, I asked him like, you know, what's up? And he's like, Oh, I actually have a room coming up for rent. It's like a hundred dollars a month. Wow. Uh, rent controlled <laughs> room and uh, post off post street in San Francisco in the Tenderloin. Um, and so me and pedestrian shared a room for like $50 a month or something. Wow. Until, until we, uh, but then like, but I had like, um, computer experience so i instantly got a job making like fifty thousand dollars a year um you know with no college degree or anything and so it's just like cool i'm gonna buy a new car and start a record company and <laughs> go cool. live so, you know it's awesome yeah and do a little music on the side did you guys go out there with that mindset that um you were going to continue the independent path or was it a mindset to create a label or get on a label or what was what was that that mindset like? Because because the Bay Area where you were going inevitably was full of a bunch of artists that were kind of groundbreaking in that independent lane, like you know Hyro and all those dudes and and, and 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 living legends and stuff like that. I mean, I feel like I was always like saying I'd take a million dollars. Like when I was meeting with A and R's, I would always be like, "Give me a million dollars." Yeah, you know. Yeah, like that was always my number. Like. So if anybody had ever given me a million dollars or, if, or may, I mean, being honest, like or even made a concrete offer of like 250,000 or some, you know, some huge number that you'd be like, okay, Can't you know, turn it down. $200,000 is $200,000. Nice. Yeah. You know, a lot of like, money. Uh, maybe, um, but I was so fiercely independent and independent m label minded, like, um, you know, everything from like, um, J Live to like Duck Down, you know, like all these ind great independent labels. Um, like that's what inspired me, you know, like OC Times Up, like, you know, oh, that's yeah. the shit I believed in. Classic. You know, yeah. the, uh, the, 
like the stupidly independent, like all the people who like proclaimed it the loudest, like sold out the fastest, mm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That always seems like it's, it, that's the deal. The people that are standing on the soapbox, the highest are the first ones to jump off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Can't blame him, man. No, I can't. It sucks yeah. being up there. Anti Con would start picking up steam and, and, and blowing up in the States as well as overseas. When you guys were, were, you know, getting more popular what was the reception like from other collectives around the Bay Area, such as Hieroglyphics, Living Legends, Borstiff, people like that? Were you guys feeling like you were welcome or more uh, feeling like outcasts during that time because you were so niche and different, doing something that was completely experimental? Yeah, at the completely time. non-traditional. Yeah, it was a little bit of both. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Like, um, it was a little bit of both. Um, you know, I feel like we got a lot more love in the Bay than we did in, in, in other places. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, like PSC was always, you know, was always my homie. PSC oh, yeah. from Living Legends oh, yeah. was always, Lucky. you know, just a good, friendly, nice guy. Other people were skeptical of us. Mm -hmm. um, other people were like friends with LP. And so they, you know, yeah. make little sneak disses and shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, um, you know, other like some people in Living Legends, like Merce, like openly didn't like us, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, uh, board Stiff, I don't, we never really came across them. Uh, you know, I remember once like this band Socialistics, they were like at, at a show we did and they were just in the crowd like yelling like, Oh, you're a poet. Fuck you. These guys are what, <laughs> you know, the cops sound like. <laughs> yeah. These, these guys would call the cops. You know, these bunch of snitch, you know, all narcs yeah. on the stage, um, you know, so it was like, it, it, you know, it was, it was a mixed bag, um, for the most part, but we just kind of did our own thing. But, you know, people like Elron was my homie, you know, we, uh, we worked with, uh, Meg Abusive, yeah. uh, who you guys were talking about earlier. Yep. Um, you know, you know. What, and we had like a scene, you know, we we're like doing these monthlies and um, and so, you know, those those things are always a complicated um, terrain of, um, you know, politics, yeah, basically, totally. you know. Yeah. From a, from the outside looking in as a fan, I think you guys and you in general did a great job of, um, you know, kind of this doing your own thing like yeah whatever that is you're not going to win them all over mm. so you just i you know you you stay true to who you guys were which which was, i love which was really good and refreshing for us to watch and coming up i mean i swear that sampler album was probably one of my favorite things ever What's yeah that? the anticon sampler, the anticon sampler yeah. Album? Yeah. i'm not even joking like coming up i swear everybody that i knew that knew good niche music was the homies a small crowd of eight to nine of us that always mm. chilled every day and that was yeah. all day everybody played that sampler album yeah. And to this day, I'll still play shit off that sample album that I highly enjoy. I mean, that fucking album itself is amazing. So I know that's I mean, awesome. Everything about it. I mean, well, that and that's a, that's is great. You know, well, and like I was thinking, like when you, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you've made music and so much music that's gonna be here forever forever you know what yeah. i mean like your kids as kids will have music that they get to listen to grandpa you know long after you're gone so like what you've accomplished already is i think legendary and uh whether the numbers back it which you know they should and we're all on the on the side that you should be obviously making more money and having more views and listens <laughs> but whether that happens or not you still have done something legendary on this planet you know what i mean which i think is very very amazing and on, yeah, yeah. on that note, yeah, too. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. 